Hello guys, Jerry Bakoda here, back with a new video series, and this video series is going to be quite different to the previous ones on this channel, due to the fact that we're going to be looking at a function programming language known as Haskell. Haskell is a quite a popular function programming language, it differs to the other languages I've done on this channel, Python, C Sharp mostly, uh, for quite a few reasons. Now, one, one, now I, I call Haskell a functional programming language. Now, a functional programming language, some, some of you may not be, may not know what that, what that means, is that it, is that it works with mathematical functions. It changes data based on mathematical functions, and it's not, it's, it's not like Python or C Sharp, where you're instructing the computer uh, to do a series of tasks, and pieces with data. It's, it's a bit different. So it's similar, but a bit different in that you're working with data and you're, and you're manipulating with mathematical functions. It, it becomes much more clear when we actually delve into Haskell. Um, but to, Haskell is, it's, it's known for, is that you, you, you're not telling the computer what to do and how to do it, but you're telling the computer what it is, what is what, what this is. Um, but yeah. uh, so that's functional programming in a, in a nutshell, really. It's different. It's different. It's not like conventional programming, also known as imperative programming, where there's a set of declarations in a specific syntax or format. Uh, but yeah, functional programming is computation is a combination of separate mathematical functions. Um, when you ever create these math, math, mathematical functions, whatever whatever parameters you've set, whatever data in those parameters you've set, the output will always be the same. There's no side effects. Also, that means that any any other parts in your program will not affect that function. So yeah, so that's functional programming. Uh, it's it is a part of what is known as um, declarative languages, and SQL is an example of declarative language. Now, Python is is mostly considered to be a object-oriented or procedural language. It can do both. Um, it's it's mostly considered to be an a an imperative language, but it can it does have fun, some functional programming in it as well. Uh, but other examples of functional programming is C sharp. It's another not C sharp F sharp. Uh, C sharp is an object oriented. F sharp, also written by Microsoft, is a functional uh, programming language as well. Although. I say functional, but you can also do imperative and object oriented as well. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Haskell, I guess you could say, is a true is a true uh, functional programming language. But so anyway, so end of discussion on what on what this is. Let me stop rambling on. And so, in order to actually begin working with Haskell, we have to download the Haskell uh, program, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so if you visit haskell.org for slash platform, you can download for multiple platforms like Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And when once you have downloaded this, um, you can head over to your slot menu or dock or whatever. And uh, if you scroll down to H Haskell, this is if you're using Windows, uh, click on Win G H, yeah G H C I, this program. And you'll present with this. Now you won't do most. Your coding won't really be on this file. Um, you'll be opening up is your base is your. Well, I've named it my basic operator file. Uh, but you'll you'll be opening up whatever whatever file you've you've decided to create. It has to be as the extension .hs, meaning Haskell. And I'm using Visual Code over here with the Haskell syntax highlighting extension over here. So over in Haskell. So it'll give me all the syntax highlighting from in Haskell. So it makes my life much easier. So for this video, uh, for this video specifically, we're going to be looking at basic operators. In the next video, we're going to be delving into uh, uh, the different the different things you can do with Haskell, such as decision making, uh, functions, input and output, all that. All that will be discussed in this video series. But let's start off with basic operators, such as addition, multiplication. Uh, subtraction, division, and all that, and all that jazz. So we're going to start with saying over here main equals do, and that that you can consider that to be like a function. You're you're saying over here variable. We're going to call it main, and we're going to say equal do. I do the following, right? 
and we assign that to a variable called main. And inside, now there is no uh, colon or, or um, curly brackets. There's none of that. Uh, there's none of that in Haskell. You just simply press enter and indent. It's automatically been indented for me. And uh, what we're going to say over here is we're going to say let uh, a is equal to five and let b is equal to ten, for example. And what we're going to say over here as well, we're going to say over here put string l in. We say the addition of the two numbers is, and then we're going to put over here, just print me over here, a plus 5. Oh, not plus, b, not plus 5, a plus b, right. And if we just now go on to is our program over here, and we just open up, so it's already opened. I'm just going to press over here this reload button. I'm sure there's a shortcut for that. Yes, control R. Whenever you make a change, do reload your file because it loads it into memory. The program loads it into memory, um, your file contents. So do reload your file. And then type of a main, and it, there you go. It runs that variable main, and the main func the main variable has do, and which means do the following. So let a equal five. Very similar to other languages when you're assigning variables, uh, but we're not saying if here what the, if a is a string or double, or a boolean, which is saying, let a equal 5. I assign a to the value of 5. Then put string len. Um, all this just does is, you know, print a string with len, and also the len part, now that, that creates a new line. If we got rid of the len and reloaded this, we say over here, uh, main, what we see is it'll be on the same line, which we can also do. If we don't want a new line, we can just make it make it look like they're on the same line, we just say put string, remove the len part, ln, remove that. Oh, I can't see. <laughs> what? I cannot actually see. It's down below over here. It's interesting, the scroll, the scrollness on this is... Anyway, here it is. The addition of the two numbers is 15. There you go. And let's say we want to do some subtraction. Well, let's just copy this over. I'll just say we had the, the subtraction, subtraction, if I could spell today, the subtraction of the two numbers is a minus b, and let's also do for multiplication and division while we're at it. The multiplication. And the division. So let's now reload, which is Control R, let's type in the very main, and there you go, those are the values right there. And yes, they do output with 0 0.1, not 0 0.1, I want to say, they output with 0, .0 I mean. Um, so yeah, so essentially they get converted into decimals, um, which is normal in many languages. Python, whenever you do, well, not for addition, for sub, for I want to say division and division, yeah, that's division. I think that, that's when you mostly see it in division. Even though that you might be dividing two numbers, which there's no decimal point required, it adds it on, it converts into a float. Uh, but yeah, so that's fine, no problem with that. So. Those are the basic uh, operators, but with the Haskell, I think one of the, one of the powerful uh, operators it has is a special operator which I don't think exists in many other languages. And this is the sequence or range operator. And I, I, I do really like this operator in that it makes it easy to print out a sequence of numbers. You don't have to create four loops to print out a sequence of numbers. It will just print you out a sequence of numbers. And you just do it by saying here, oh yeah, print me, not in, no, not in curly brackets, uh, or curved brackets, in square brackets. Print me out, one, dot, dot, ten. Print me out between one to ten, and this includes the numbers one and ten. So say, uh, control R, and then type in main, and there we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alright? Very simple to, uh... To print out of here 
arrange numbers. And yes, you can do this with other stuff, with other with other uh, data types. So we can say a dot z. If we type here reload, not re not reload, control R. I mean, it's complaining here that variable scope a variable not in scope z double. So. Oh, what am I doing that's wrong there? Ah, it's referring to these as variables, that's why, because it's saying A, A is 5, but there's no uh, variable for Z. So yeah, just need to put these in quotes. Treat them, these are strings, these are not variables. And now if we reload, we like main, we go over here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, no, I'm not going to read the whole alphabet. <laughs> but yeah, so that'll be it for this video. Uh, now, um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at decision makers, we're going to be looking at if and else statements, and ask on how they work. Uh, if you did enjoy this tutorial, please press that like button, and subscribe uh, so you know when I next upload the, the next video tutorial on Haskell. Goodbye.